So now that we've established how water and minerals that are dissolved within that water are taken in through this value of psi and the rules of psi, we can now move forward and look at different types of specific transport within the plant. Because now we've got water within the plant, right? We've gotten it from the soil through those rules. How do we move it around? How do we move the water and the associated material within it around the plant? Now we can do that in one of two ways, short distance and long distance. We're going to first be looking at short distance transport in this uh, flowchart entitled short distance transport, of course. Uh, this is actually will be the first one, part one. There'll be two of these. So what do we want to look at first? We first want to look at figure 36.5 as we go through this to really get a visual understanding of this. Now, short distance transport is quite simple. All we're doing here is utilizing two major plant tissue compartments. Two major plant tissue compartments. What does that mean? Essentially, what we have within every plant are these cells, right? And within the cells, we have structures that are specifically going to allow for specific functions to happen uh, in a nice differentiated specialized form. But there will also be within each sort of collection of cells, which would be a tissue, right? There will be these compartments, these sort of mechanisms that allow for transport. Those mechanisms are going to be specifically entitled as compartments and subtitled or sort of sub-labeled as the following names. One of the compartments would be utilizing the apoplast compartment and the other compartment would be the symplast compartment. Now both of these will provide different routes of short distance transport but right now we'll just define what it means to be apoplast. This apoplast compartment within the cell tissue, within the plant tissues, is going to be one that will uh, be basically everything that is external. That's what I want you to put in big, bold, capital letters. It's external. Everything external to the plasma membrane. So this is our apoplastic tissue. This would mean anything that is a cell wall. So all cell walls are external to the plasma membrane. All extracellular spaces, all space outside of the cell, in essence, would be, of course, outside of the plasma membrane. And also, the interior of certain vessel elements and tracheids because those if you remember from our plant anatomy lecture those are also outside of the plasma membrane and thus their interior specifically are of focus to us because both of these are involved in transport as we alluded to in the previous lecture but for right now they are going to be sub let's say classified as apoplastic short distance transport which we'll get to in just a second. So these are the things that would be considered apoplast in nature. These are the tissue compartments that are external to the plasma membrane. Symplast is a little bit different. This would mean the simply speaking this is considered the entire mass of anything that's within the cytosol so that's so now we're definitely not looking outside of the cell we're inside of the cell and also the interconnecting, so this is called sim, plast means this is going to be one continuous route, I would say. Also, the interconnected plasmodesmata. So every cell right next to it has this sort of small little opening that can make, allows it to continue with the next cell's cytosol. So this is basically a cytosol to cytosol to cytosol interaction. Here we have not a cytosol to cytosol interaction, we actually have an external interaction to interaction. So right now, this symplast is one continuous route, basically one sort of route of cytosol that's connected via these doors, these plasmodesmata, that are going to allow for one sort of way to do short distance transport. On the other hand, you have the apoplastic route, which we'll get to now. So look at figure 36.5, it really helps you visualize the difference between these. So. There are going to be three basic routes that we're going to cover today of transport within, let's say, a tissue and an organ. Now, right now, what we're saying is a tissue and an organ. There's a reason for that. So let me write this down, within tissue slash organ. So right now, we're staying within a tissue and organ. Why is that? Short distance transport. We cannot go from, let's say, the root all the way to the top of the the highest leaf in this short distance transport. We're only talking about one tissue or one organ. Basically, we think about it like this. We're talking about the transport that happens within a leaf or with 
in a branch. Those are all going to be specific tissues and organs that are going to have to have some sort of short distance transport within them. So that's the key word here, within tissues and organs because we're talking about short distance transport. We'll get to long distance transport a little bit later and that will be between tissues and organs, but later on we'll get to that. So what are the three routes? First and foremost we have the apoplastic route and that's of course going to utilize the apoplast. What's going to happen here? The apoplastic route is actually how um, mostly all, how most of, I would say, the water, how most of H2O and dissolved nutrients moves through or within a tissue and organ. Dissolved nutrients. So when we want to move, let's say, some water and minerals from one part of the leaf to another, most of the time we're going to use the apoplastic route of movement. What does this route of movement entail? What does it include? Well, this is going to be when water and solutes, so water and whatever is dissolved within it, the solutes, move along a continuum. Move along a continuum, so one continuous route, a continuum of the apoplastic features, things like cell walls, CWs, and extracellular spaces. When you have water moving through these extracellular spaces, through these cell walls, what type of short distance transport are you using? You are using apoplastic transport. This is how most of the water and dissolved nutrients therefore move around within one tissue and one organ. Contrast this with the idea of symplastic transport. Symplastic short distance transport is another route we can use to move from one part of a leaf, let's say, to another part of a leaf. What's going to happen here? In this situation, H2O, and always with H2O is what? The solutes or dissolved material, whatever you want to call it. For right now, we'll switch it up and say solutes. H2O and solutes move along a different continuum. This is not the same continuum, still a continuum nonetheless, move along a continuum, a continuum of cytosol. Why cytosol? Why is that term being mentioned? Well, that's because the symplast is a tissue compartment that's the entire mass of the cytosol interconnected via these doors called plasmodesmata between each cell. So in this continuum of cytosol, we're going to have essentially the following. We'll have entry of H2O and solutes into cytosol. And that's going to be via the plasma membrane of the first cell. Let's say the first cell that's going to be uh, going to absorb this water or get the water. And then from there, what we're going to have is a transfer via plasmodesmata. Those are the doors that open up to the next cell, to the next continuum, next part of the continuum, I should say, the next cytosol, essentially. And that's how we move cell to cell. Via plasma desmata, we start at one cell and then we go through every other cell. How are we doing all of this? This is all going to be done through, of course, the cytosol. So cytosol. That's the symplastic route. Take home message, use the cytosol to do a continuous movement of water and solutes. Apoplastic take home, use the cell walls and extracellular, make, extracellular spaces to do a continuous movement of water and solutes. And then finally, the last one, which would be the transmembrane route of short distance transport that's of course within an organ. The transmembrane route, very simple. Here we have H2O and of course within H2O always are those solutes that are dissolved. Solutes move out of one cell, so that's the first step. Move out of one cell and where do they go? They now go across a cell wall, so now we have exited the plasma membrane, we're moving across the cell wall, and then we move into a neighboring cell. That's it. So this is very, very short distance transport because it's just between membranes, whereas the symplastic and apoplastic is a little bit longer short distance transport, if that makes sense. So those are our three routes, apoplastic, symplastic, and transmembrane, utilizing these different tissue compartments. We'll continue our discussion on short distance transport in the next flowchart.